Welcome back to AB 474 Indoor Environmental Control. We are in Chapter 5 of our um, text in recovering heat transmission in buildings and structures. We're currently reviewing the three modes of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. And we're on the third section, which is radiation. We've already covered conduction and convection. So let's go ahead and dig in and start to take a look at radiation. When we're talking about radiation in terms of um, our HVAC systems, we're referring to thermal radiation. <clears throat> so that radiation which can impact the thermal conditions uh, within our space. When we, when we say radiation, what we're talking about is the transfer of energy. As with all of our modes of heat transfer, we're looking at a transfer of energy. Uh, and in this case, it's not about uh, surfaces touching or a fluid touching a surface. In this case, we're looking at transfer by waves, by magnetic waves. And I find that radiation is one of the hardest to talk about because it's the least tangible. So I don't have a way to uh, sketch a picture of what radiation looks like for you and draw the wall and the fluid and show you the motion. Um, but we'll draw some pictures and talk about the impacts and, and how um, uh, energy is moving from one surface to another, uh, which is what we're typically looking at when we are talking about heat transfer within our building structures. Um, though we have radiation transfer that happens uh, from the sun to our structure, um, from the atmosphere to our structure, from one structure to another structure, from occupants to a structure. So there are a lot of different um, entities involved in radiation exchange. And there are a lot of different entities that are transferring energy by magnetic waves or um, uh, and in the form of electromagnetic magnetic energy that is leaving one surface and then is intercepted by another. <clears throat> intercepted and absorbed. So that result results in an exchange of radiation. Okay, any object, any surface that is above zero Kelvin Any object above zero Kelvin emits thermal radiation. All objects above zero emit thermal radiation. And so the first thing we're going to talk about is emitted radiation. So radiation that's the electromagnetic energy um, that is leaving a surface. Okay. Emission happens over uh, different wavelengths. And peak emission is categorized by Wien's law. And I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not, but that's the best uh, attempt that I have for you, Wien's law, uh, where the Wavelength where maximum emission occurs, so that's this lambda at the maximum emission, that's what that max means, not the greatest wavelength, but the greatest emission, happens at 2,898 divided by the surface temperature in Kelvin. <clears throat> um, and for example, The Earth temperature is at approximately 300 Kelvin, and so the maximum radiation emission from the Earth's surface happens at approximately a wavelength of 10 microns. And we call this long wave radiation. Let's 
Um, and as you can see, the temperature, um, as temperature goes up, this uh, wavelength will go further and further down, and then we get into short wave radiation, okay? So, theoretical emissions. So in theory, the amount of energy that is leaving uh, a surface can be predicted by a constant times the surface temperature in Kelvin raised to the fourth. And this constant is called the Stefan-Boltzmann constant. And it is 5.6697 times 10 to the negative 8th watt per meter squared Kelvin to the 4th. And so you can see there's a measure of energy, a measure of area, and a, a measure of temperature that need to, to be factored in there. And when you combine that with the surface temperature, you end up with watts per meter squared. <clears throat> so the actual emitted radiation is not theoretical emitted radiation. Uh, there are no absolutely perfect emitters uh, in, 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 on the Earth's surface at least uh, that we are going to be dealing with. Um, and so we're going to look at a simplified version of this uh, equation that has some corrections in there for um, the reality of actual emissions. So we add this value of emittance as a correction factor. And it is dependent upon the characteristics of the surface. <clears throat> okay, so we have a radiation that is leaving from a surface and we have radiation that is coming onto a surface. So let's take a look for a minute at some terminology for describing radiation that is coming onto and leaving from a surface. Okay? <clears throat> All right. So we have <coughs> This is transmitted radiation. And so let's assume that this is um, some material that allows uh, uh, radiation to pass through it. So for example, um, well, let's just say this is a material that allows radiation that comes onto the surface to pass through that surface and come out the other side. We have uh, emittance, so that's what's coming off of this part of the surface. We have some that can come onto the surface and be reflected instead of being absorbed and passed through. Um, and so these H's are going to represent what's coming onto the surface. So in this case, we're only going to look at this surface. Um, and so there's some amount of radiation coming onto this surface that's passing through and being transmitted through. There's some amount of radiation that's just being emitted from the surface based on the nature of this surface. And then there's another source of radiation that's coming onto the surface and being um, uh, reflected. And then there's some amount of radiation that's being absorbed. Okay. <clears throat> now all of these, this total amount of radiation that's leaving a surface can be represented by this capital B. And B is called radiosity. And it's the total radiation that leaves the surface. And it is represented as the sum of the amount emitted plus the amount reflected plus the amount transmitted. Okay, um, This emitted part, this WB, would be black body emissive power. So 
So if it were a perfect emitter, this is what it would emit. But because it's not, we have a corrective coefficient that's called the uh, emittance that corrects for this. So a black body is a perfect emitter. And we correct our surfaces uh, because their characteristics are not that of a black body. Um, <clears throat> So this H that we're looking at, that we talked about here, is called irradiation. And it represents the total radiation that comes onto the surface, or that's incident onto a surface. So we have radiosity is the amount that leaves the surface, and we have irradiation is the amount that comes onto a surface. Uh, we have transmission, emission, and reflectance, uh, and absorptance. Okay, so let's take a look at each one of those. depends, as we said, on the surface characteristics. Reflectance. Um, it's represented as a uh, proportion and it's the amount that's reflected to the total. Transmittance is also um, represented as a proportion, as the portion that's transmitted related to the portion that's uh, the total. and absorptance. Same thing, it's represented as a portion, a proportion. It's important to note with absorptance that it is numerically the same <clears throat> the emittance. So the amount absorbed is numerically the same as the amount emitted in terms of the, the, the value of its so the proportional value of its ability to absorb. So these are characteristics, so the ability to emit, the ability to reflect, the ability to transmit, and the ability to absorb. So numerically, alpha is the same as um, epsilon um, if you are at the same wavelength. So if you're at the same wavelength, and that's important, the at the same wavelength part, um, which we'll see in some examples. Um, if we add up the proportion that's reflected plus transmitted plus absorbed, you get one. Um, and so likewise, if you add up reflected plus transmitted plus emitted, it's one, if you're at the same wavelength. <clears throat> if we have an opaque surface, our transmission is zero. So our reflected plus absorbed is one. 
and if we're at the same wavelength, we can solve that for um, either emittance or absorptance. <clears throat> As we've seen before, uh, the we can kind of say these two represent the same thing, right? So our heat transfer on an area basis can be the total heat transfer divided by the area. Um, and that is represented uh, by the amount uh, that is leaving the surface by the amount that is coming onto a surface. <clears throat> so this is our net energy flux. And our sign convention is such that this is a positive value if the energy is leaving a surface. Now, as you start to combine uh, modes of heat transfer, you need to, as you put them together, pay attention to these sign conventions. And instead of thinking about it as positive or negative, think of it as energy leaving, leaving the surface or coming onto the surface, okay? Uh, leaving the, the structure or coming onto the structure. And just make sure that the signs for all of those line up accordingly. So when you start to do an energy balance, if you have uh, condu conduction that's coming on and radiation that's leaving, make sure the signs are opposite of one another. <clears throat> so we've talked about um, a single surface and radiation uh, sort of looking at that single surface, but what happens in reality is that we have radiation that is ex exchanging between two surfaces. So if you recall in our definition, we said that it is energy that leaves one object and is absorbed, intercepted and absorbed by another object. So we need to start thinking about how do we bring in that other object. So we've talked about radiation coming onto a surface and leaving a surface and what leaves the surface is impacted by what comes onto the surface, which is why we brought that in already. But what about radiation exchanges between surfaces? <clears throat> so in your textbook, Equation 510 is presenting the equation for radiation exchange be between two surfaces. Specifically, they say energy exchange um, 1 to 2 means leaving surface 1 intercepted by surface 2 is equal to <coughs> the Stefan-Boltzmann constant times the temperature differential between those two surfaces uh, and divided by um, the sum of these factors that are uh, related to the surfaces and how they're oriented with one another. So 1 minus the emittance uh, over the area times emittance of surface 1 plus 1 over the area times a shape factor, which is essentially the orientation, how, how the two surfaces are oriented with respect to one another. Uh, plus 1 minus the emittance over the area times emittance of the other surface. Okay. Um, and again, this uh, is the Stefan Boltzmann constant. So let's take a look at it. And the value that is given for the Stefan Boltzmann constant here is just a little bit off from the one that I gave you for um, radiation that's emitted from a surface. And I don't know the exact reason for that. Um, that's a challenge that I need to go answer for myself. Um, but if any of you chooses to answer it first, I would love to hear the answer uh, so that I can add it to my lecture materials. <clears throat> but within this exchange between two surfaces, the Stefan Boltzmann constant uh, in English units looks like this and in metric units looks like this. And with this equation, we kind of uh, alluded to what each of those values was uh, as I wrote down the equation, but let's write them out. Um, T is the absolute temperature. 
and it's going to be given either in Rankin or Kelvin. <clears throat> uh, we had the emittance before, so I'm going to have that again. And you're going to have uh, an emittance for each of your surfaces. <coughs> and they may be different from one another. <clears throat> A is your surface area of each surface. F, as I said, is this configuration factor or this shape factor. <clears throat> And it is, um, just to recall, based on the orientation of the two surfaces. With respect to one another. Um, and as we saw before, this is our absorptance. And for what we're going to call a gray surface, your emittance and your absorbance are equivalent. <clears throat> so let's uh, talk for just a minute about the shape factor or configuration factor. The book doesn't talk too much about this, so we're going to spend just a couple of minutes extra on it. Factor. Depending on what reference you're using is whether they call it a configuration factor or a shape factor. <coughs> and the relationship between um, shape factor is that um, the shape factor for um, a radiation leaving surface 1 and going on to surface 2 times the area of surface 1 is equal to the shape factor for radiation leaving surface 2 going to two to surface 1 times the area of surface 2. <clears throat> so let's look at a couple of uh, examples of, of some shape factors, uh, some that we commonly encounter in HVAC settings. Um, so let's say we have a large space, a large enclosure, uh, which we're going to call 2, and an occupant inside there. And I'm going to art interlude. We haven't had one of those in a while. Uh, I'll give you my best sketch of a, of a chicken. Well, that's not too bad. Let's give her some more pretty feathers at the back. All right. Um, and this is going to be our shape one. And so what we're seeing in um, <clears throat> this scenario is that everything leaving object one is being absorbed by um, object two. So everything leaving our, our occupant is uh, being intercepted by the enclosure. And so our shape factor from 1 to 2 is 1. And our shape factor from 2 to 1 uh, is a very, very small number. So we don't usually put 0 in here for it. It's a very, very small number. And if we wanted to, we could solve for it if we had a 1 and a 2. Another scenario that we see in HVAC applications uh, have to do with two um, planes that are perpendicular to one another. Um, this is going to be our A1, this is going to be our A2. <clears throat> so here we have perpendicular surfaces. ratio of the shape factor from 2 to 1 and 1 to 2 is um, solvable uh, essentially by rearranging this equation um, and you can see that the relationship is <coughs> uh, 
uh, the amount leaving 1 to 2 over 2 to 1 is the area of 2 over the area of 1. Now let's say that we have <coughs> perpendicular surfaces that are dissimilar materials. So let's say we have an area 1 and then we have a 2A and a 2B. Uh, where, say for example, this is a wall and this is some grass and then this is pavement. So we have, you know, dissimilar materials uh, side by side. So we can combine to two is equal to <clears throat> one F to two A plus A one F. Um, <coughs> so the amount leaving uh, surface 1 and going to surface 2 uh, is related to uh, the total area and the shape factors. Okay. <coughs> and the, um, the only special case that I want to come back to is um, <clears throat> this scenario where we have a small object in a large space and I want to take a look at what that does to our radiation exchange equation. So so if we have the special case of a small object let's go, what do we have here? Inside of a large space, a large surrounding, a large enclosure. So our F from 1 to 2 equals 1, as we saw before. Um, our radiation exchange between those two surfaces, <clears throat> because our shape factor becomes 1, everything that leaves one object is absorbed by the other. So our equation simplifies pretty drastically. And that's the uh, special case where we have everything that's leaving one object absorbed by another object. So next we're going to work an example um, looking at uh, radiation exchanges. And it's going to be uh, a fun little example tie in a little bit of semi-local culture. So let's say that we have a baby elephant uh, in a barn on a cold winter day and we're at the Brookfield Zoo. The inside temperature of our barn roof is 16.4 degrees Celsius um, and we're going to assume the baby elephant's average surface temperature is 32 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> Uh, the surface area of its back is approximately 1.5 meters squared and the emittance of its skin is 0.9 and can be considered a small object in a large space. So what is the total from a radiation heat transfer between the inside roof and the baby elephant? So it's kind of a fun little problem. Um, I could have picked a cow or a pig or a chicken, but a baby elephant sounded like fun. Uh, I'm not going to e express my uh, artistic abilities on this one, um, so you're going to have to imagine uh, a baby elephant in a barn. Uh, we know that our mode of heat transfer in this case is radiation. We are given uh, our baby elephant temperature, surface temperature. And we can convert that to Kelvin. We are told that we have a small object in a large space. <clears throat> uh, we are given the surface area of our baby elephant. And we are given an emittance value for a baby elephant. <clears throat> and we are given the lower surface temperature of our roof. Right. 
we are asked to calculate the heat transfer. Right, this is a pretty straightforward problem and what I really hope that you take from it is that while in this problem you're given a lot of um, <clears throat> known values in a we are going to work toward attaining some of those values for ourselves. Specifically, um, typically you wouldn't have the lower surface temperature of your roof. You would need to estimate that on your own. Uh, so we'll we'll kind of expand on this problem as you'll see in the future. But um, let's do a little exercise with our solution and let's take our governing equation and show how it becomes that simplified equation that I uh, showed for you earlier. So let's do just a little deriving. <clears throat> so if you recall, I showed you a sp the special case of this, and now we're going to convince ourselves that uh, the special case is true. So there's our overall governing equation. And we know that this shape factor is going to be 1. And we know that this area is very, very large. So this calculation is going to approximately uh, go to infinity. So our A2 is very large, which means that this um, denominator we can approximate goes to infinity, which means this entire term heads towards zero. So we can just um, work on the uh, assumption that the value or the contribution of this piece is um, nearly negligible to this sum. Uh, and when we do that, our equation simplifies. <clears throat> okay, and we've factored out a, a little bit here to move things around in our equation. that little bit of almost magic that I did there to manipulate the equation. Not total magic because I kind of showed you what I did. Um, and then if we simplify it one step further we have a few things um, that, that can now uh, <clears throat> come be factored out of this and we end up with a I guess I said it factors out, but they really just cancel. So this negative and this positive cancel, and you end up with 1 in the denominator. Um, so that's the equation we get for <clears throat> small object in a large space. So we have convinced ourselves that that equation, that simplified special case equation, is correct. And so then we just plug the numbers in and end up with uh, the, the heat transfer value. <coughs> and I encourage you to check my math to see if I uh, did the calculation correctly um, and I also encourage you to make sure I've described the process correctly as well um, but you should end up with a heat transfer of 125.7 watts so there you go. Okay, so with our other um, modes of heat transfer, <clears throat> we were looking for a common way to begin to combine our heat transfer into an overall heat transfer. So let's take a look at how radiation is represented in terms of equivalent resistance. So our analogous uh, electrical model. First of all, the important question, it can be combined, so we can do this. It doesn't look quite like it does for the other two. So it can be a combined 
to <clears throat> equivalent R. Um, and this is the relationship we've been looking at. So we want to uh, represent it using the same relationship, and it can be. So um, it is important to note that uh, when we combine them, uh, we don't have a standalone R radiation. So that's very, very important to note. We don't have an R sta standalone R radiation. So how do we combine that into an overall heat transfer coefficient? <clears throat> well, we have to ask where do we mostly see this radiation? So uh, in terms of getting an overall heat transfer coefficient, um, in terms of our wall sections, uh, if we're looking at a wall gap, it's combined with that uh, the convective heat transfer coefficient uh, within a wall or air gap. And in lab, we will discuss that a little bit. Um, and in some of our examples, we will discuss that a little bit about what's happening inside that wall. Um, but let's take, for example, we have a plain wall space. <clears throat> So we have the temperature of the wall inside the building, the temperature of the wall outside the building. This is our inside. This is our outside. Uh, we have a temperature outside and a temperature inside. Uh, we have a convective heat transfer coefficient inside, a convective heat transfer coefficient outside. We have a wall and some uh, thermal resistance associated with that wall. And we have um, <clears throat> a variety of uh, different heat transfer values that we're interested in. Okay. So we have Q convection in Q conducted by the wall Q convective outside <clears throat> And we have some amount of radiation. Uh, we could have radiation both inside and outside. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and say here we have QR inside and QR outside. And unless we have an air gap inside here, we don't have Q radiation. But we could have another section in here that has an air gap and there would be radiation at both surfaces of that wall as well. So we have um, radiation happening at our surfaces uh, and exchanging with other surfaces, right? Uh, and we need to represent that. Um, <clears throat> but what actually happens is that the values that you look up in the table for this uh, uh, convective heat transfer coefficient at the surface include the effects of the radiation. Okay, so whenever you go and you build this equivalent circuit, say for example, well, we could go ahead and do the same thing here. Um, Whenever you build a wall, like, wall section like this, the value that you get out of the table includes both of these already combined together. up in just a second so you can see it. There we go. Alright, so whenever you pull a, a value out of the table for the surface coefficient um, for an indoor or outdoor, uh, that I guess table 5, 2, A, and B, it already includes these two combined together. So we'll say Ri convective 
and our O convective. So the value pulled from the table includes radiation and convective combined. Okay. <clears throat> And kind of to, to end here, we'll look at another example, kind of like this one, but we'll go ahead and add an air gap in and uh, just demonstrate the, the same thing, that in an airspace, it's going to have some uh, radiation. Let's go here. Let's draw a wall section. We're going to start with an airspace in the middle, some section of wall on the inside, a section of wall. Okay. Okay. Well. Plus x t sub y t wall i t wall o. <clears throat> Okay, so um, here's another example of a little more uh, complex wall, which has two different solid surfaces and uh, an airspace in between. <clears throat> and so, kind of likewise to what we saw before, we have uh, some Q by convection inside, Q from radiation inside, Q from conductance through the wall. Uh, here we get two Q's again because we get one due to the convection happening and one due to the radiation between the surfaces. And we're going to call that gap. Q convective from the gap. Uh, and then the same thing, we're going to have two here. Q convective from the outside and Q radiation from the outside. Um, <clears throat> and um, in the table for this gap, it's going to combine those two together. So I'm going to go ahead and combine them into what your thermal circuit would actually look like using the table values. Okay, so you're going to have Ti. We have Ri, which that Ri is going to conclude the R for both the convective and the radiative. <coughs> We're going to call this the inside wall, the R of the gap, and this R of the gap is going to include um, both the radiative and the convective. R of the wall out, and R of the outside, which is going to include both convective and radiative resistances. Um, and that's where we're going to stop with radiation. Um, the next few sections are going to look at uh, evaporation, condensation, and then mixed mode heat transfer where we're starting to put things together.